Uh, so I want to go over the three mindsets that's needed to take advantage of the full benefits operating automatically instead of manually. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 23, let's read it. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way by which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. To seize the full benefit and operate automatically instead of manually. Number one, the word says here in verse 22, we got to be thankful for his work. Thankful for the Lord's work in our hearts. Thankful for his protection in our life. Thankful for who he is in our life. Thankful for his work. Thankful for what he did on Calvary. The Bible says, the scripture says here, let us draw near with a true heart. And a true heart is a heart that is thankful. We are thankful because he is the door that opened the way into God's presence. Christ is the bridge that connected where we was to where we want to be in God. He is the mediator. And so we are to always be grateful for what Jesus did for you and I. Jesus is the door to God's grace. God's grace flows through Jesus Christ. So everything we have and everything we will receive, it comes through Jesus Christ. God operates through him. So we always should be grateful in worship and thankful for his work, for the work of the cross, the work of Jesus Christ. The Bible says again, verse 22, let us draw near to God with a true heart. The reason we draw near with a true heart is because the work of the cross was a one-time decision. It was a one-time decision by God to save mankind, a one-time decision to deliver you from your sins, a one-time decision that God sent his only begotten son, that you should have life and that you should have life more abundantly, a one-time decision. Now, there is a law that we have in our legal world. It is called the law of double jeopardy. The law of double jeopardy it simply says that you can't be tried twice for the same crime. Jesus has already been tried for your crimes. He's been tried for your sins. So you are under no obligation to the flesh because God has already pronounced judgment on the flesh. Don't allow your flesh to judge you again because you are not to go in double jeopardy. The work of the cross is a one-time decision. It has already been pronounced. God's wrath has already come down on sin and it came down on the person of Jesus Christ for you. Be thankful for his work. Be thankful for God's grace. Be thankful for his mercy. Be thankful for God's delivering power. For this is the mindset that sees the full benefit. God's grace operates through a spirit of gratitude. Again, God's grace operates through a spirit of gratitude. It's when you are thankful, you move from manual to automatic. You are thankful for his work. This is how you seize the full benefits and operate in automatic. You're thankful for his work, but you also reverence his work. You reverence Christ's work.
the Bible says, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Having the full assurance of faith. This simply means it's having the full assurance that Jesus Christ is sufficient or worthy to present us before the God of grace. It's reverencing his word. Jesus is acknowledging that Jesus is all I need. It's acknowledging that I can build my hope in him and build them on things eternal that is in his name because he is worthy of honor. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy for me to be inconvenienced for him. He is worthy for my life to be interrupted, that I may pray, that I may trust him, that I may wait on him. He is worthy. And the second thing is to reverence his worth. There's an analogy told in a book that says a bee one day flew into a car with a little boy riding with his father. The boy began to shout and scream because of this bee. His father reached out grabbed the bee and squeezed it in his hand. Then he opened his hand, the bee flew back out again and began to buzz all around the boy. And the boy continued to scream. The father looked at him and said, son, you don't have to scream. He held out his hand and there, the stinger of the bee. He said, son, all the bee can do is buzz. All the bee can do is make noise. See, this is what Christ did for you as it relates to death. All death can do now is buzz. Death does not have a sting anymore because Jesus took the sting out of death. Jesus took the buzz out of death. Death has no power for those who believe in Christ Jesus. This is another reason why we reverence his work. He conquered death, hell, and the grave for us. He is worthy to be honored. He is worthy to be lifted. He is worthy to be worshiped. And the way to operate in automatic instead of manual is to reverence his worth. And the last thing that the text tells us about the word of God is we gotta believe his word. We got to believe, believe the word of God. The word says in verse 23, let us hold fast without what? Wavering. For he who promised is faithful. God is faithful because he is the source of all grace. You know, the sun shines all the time. The sun never stops shining. Even though it gets dark outside, the sun never stops shining. The only reason we experience darkness on earth is because the earth turns away from the sun. God is faithful in the same way. He's faithful and his word is faithful and true. 